Hi, the last section is the beta regression. So the idea is similar to quasi the binomial, but the some differences. So often the response variable y, the range is in an interval zero one, but the denominator and the numerator are not given. Of the mammal sleep data, the, we don't know the n or you know the, the number of just we got the ratio. And also in the real world data, for example, I employment rate, that you know that, for example, the um, I employment rate is, for example, 9.5%, but we don't really know the numerator and the denominator. So in such a case, it's more natural that the, uh, to assume that Y is some continuous the um, variable, but it ranges in zero one. And the beta regression that assumes that the y follows the beta distribution with parameter a, b. So this is the distribution the between zero and one. And the distribution actually the, um, is shown in the next page. For example, the C, the yellow one, uh, sorry, the orange one. And the alpha is equal to two and the beta is equal to five, then distribution is this. And basically A and B or alpha and beta is the, you know, the number of success or number of failure, basically. So think about the case that the um, binomial, the trial with success probability P and that we have A successes and the B failures, then the likelihood function is P to the power A and times one minus P to the power B. So A and B are basically the number of success, actually the minus one. So A is a kind of the number of success plus one and the B is the number of failure plus one. So one is a kind of the default number. So we assume that first we have one success and one failure, then the additional the trials that we count the number of success and the number of failure. So large A and large B corresponds to a larger uh, you know, number of you know, trials. So the so the A and B gets larger, then the uh, distribution gets narrower and narrower. So if we think about the, for example, A is equal to twenty and the B is equal to fifty, then the shape of the distribution is almost the same, but the it's narrower. So probably like this. The center is the same, but the distribution is much narrower. Yeah, so you can see that if alpha and beta are very small, then actually it's not even, you know, um, unimodal function and the actually the function becomes like this. So large alpha and large beta corresponds to smaller variability basically. Okay, so why, why is assumed that the, um, to have the beta distribution with parameter AB, then um, here the mu is assumed to be the inverse logit function of eta. So that is e to the power eta over one plus e to the power eta. And here eta is the linear function of predictors. And here mu is the a over a plus b. And also we define the phi as a plus b. Then we use the mu and phi usually instead of a and b. So the parameterization is a little the complicated, but basically mu and phi is, represents everything about the a and b. So only two parameters here, two parameters here. And mu is mean parameter, and the eta is the transformed version, um, and the phi is the a plus b. So it's a kind of the um, corresponds to variance parameter. And actually, the expectation of y is mu. Expectation of y is mu, and the variance of y is mu times one minus mu times, you know, one over one plus phi. So phi is large. That means a plus b is large. So that corresponds to the a large the sample size, so that means the smaller variance. Yeah, 
And IDOS function can be replaced by any other function, a link function from the all real numbers to zero one, in the open interval zero one. So this is the uh, beta regression model. And beta regression model, excuse me, <coughs> is similar to quasi binomial model in the sense that both models they deal with a proportion response Y with two parameters. The quasi binomial that we have two parameters, um, N and P, um, maybe I, I would say the distance parameter sigma square and P. So N is usually given and the sigma square is the uh, dispersion parameter and the P is the mean parameter. And for quasi-normal model, the mu is the um, mean, so it corresponds to p in some sense, and the phi is the corresponding to the variance parameter. So it's similar. But the, what's the difference? So the difference is the, in the next um, bullet, actually. So beta regression is actually similar to linear regression. Um, in the sense that the both have the distributional assumption on y. So remember that the, we assume that the y follows the beta distribution with parameter a, b. So in logistic or binomial distribution uh, regression models that we don't really have error terms, we take ex expectation and that's it. But here, the beta regression model has a similar setting as linear regression in the sense that the Actually, y has some error, and error distribution is given by beta. Okay, so um, this is our implementation of beta distribution, uh, beta regression model. MGCV, the two fit the beta regression, and the, within this package, the, we use the GAM, so generalized additive model. So. So this is generally the some expectation of y is equal to some linear function, linear combination of actually the function of predictors. So it's pretty general model. Q times x cube, but this model uh, for um, beta regression because the if we set g and the, some others here f are all identical but the, um, we can use the, this more general framework to fit the beta regression so we have to specify the family is equal to the beta r the parentheses now probably some options available here and the, we decided to we decide to fit the pdr on log of body mass and the log of lifespan. Then um, we get the beta regression with parameter. So this is the parameter phi. So basically this is a kind of the accuracy parameter. So that it corresponds to a kind of sample size, but the, um, that parameter is 8.927. So basically we have parameter mu and phi and mu is equal to I logit of eta and eta is the linear combination of this. So you can see this is beta not beta one and beta two. So this is beta naught plus beta one x one plus beta two x. So with this, for each observation, you can calculate the value of mu. So now the, um, we can see the, what's mu and what's phi. So uh, this is how to um, fit the model. And you can also see the estimate and the standard deviation. And so here, the log of body and log of lifespan are both significant. So, um, so the result output looks uh, kind of similar to the quasi binomial model. Um, um, so some typos. So the predicted distribution of Y is calculated based on the predictor values X. 
and the estimated parameters phi hat and mu hat. So in the pr previous slide, we have seen that the phi hat and mu hat are available. Mu hat is available for each observation. And um, if these are given, then you can actually, we can calculate, we can calculate the distribution of y. So at first, the fitted value, so this is the mu hat. So first observation, for first observation, the mu hat is 0 0.267. And the phi is just the um, uniformly 8.927 for all, all observations. And to get the beta distribution, we have to describe it as a parameter with a parameter a and b. And a is actually the mu times phi. So phi is a plus b and the mu is the a over a plus b. So a is mu times phi. And a plus b is phi. So b is phi minus a. So now we can get parameter a and b. So we can make the um, density curve for um, y. So that becomes this. So the center is 2.67, 2, 2, 0.267, so around here. So the center, the expectation is here. So expectation of y is 0 0.267. But so we have some small probability of, for example, the more than 0 0.6 or something. So we can really the, exactly see the distribution of y. So that is different from the logistic or binomial regression model. So here that we have the, evaluated the reliability of mu hat and phi hat. So actually the distribution is even a little wider because we haven't considered the variability of mu hat and phi hat in this distribution. But if sample size is large, th this distribution is pretty close to the actual, the predicted distribution of y. Uh, 